My name is Mark Lepetis, and I'm the senior editor of Semiconductor Manufacturing and Design. Uh, I'm talking to uh, Luigi Capodici, director of Design for Manufacturing and uh, fellow for uh, uh, Global Foundries. We're at an interesting inflection point in the uh, silicon foundry business where people are thinking that the foundry model may be headed hit or could be hitting the wall. Could you maybe tell us whether it is or isn't? Um, there's been some uh, discussion uh, among industry uh, experts uh, about uh, the crisis uh, or even the mm, premature death of the foundry model. Uh, there are certainly reasons uh, to think uh, that that could be a possibility, but the reality uh, is that the foundry model is alive and well and uh, rather than uh, a dying model it's a, a changing and evolving model uh, um, due to the convergence of two uh, fundamental reasons one is uh, the uh, increased difficulty in uh, uh, scaling and um, technology uh, related issues the other one is the complexity of the designs that needs to be mapped onto the nodes past the 28 nanometer uh, mark. So we're going to see an evolution of uh, the foundry model uh, towards uh, uh, more of a collaborative uh, effort in design technology co-optimization. Uh, and this is already starting at 28, uh, but certainly will be the uh, reference model for 20, 14, and 10 nanometers. So, so for the third, the, the, the three uh, nominal nodes uh, that we're going to see ahead of us. Does that mean that you will have to become more like an IDM in terms of your collaboration with your partners? Certainly providing a, an IDM like or a virtual IDM, that there are many. Uh, many buzzwords, uh, uh, many names, many labels that can be given uh, to this evolutionary step in the foundry uh, uh, design uh, relationship. Uh, it's, it's certainly one of the uh, main features, but let's be more uh, specific about what this uh, type of IDM-like uh, uh, collaboration is. Uh, does this mean that we need to, uh, as a foundry, we need to customize uh, all our uh, fundamental rules and processing characteristics? Uh, that's certainly not the case. It's certainly not a scalable uh, model. But what we need to do is to build incrementally on uh, uh, the fundamental IP blocks, creating a wider, for instance, uh, uh, array of fundamental blocks. So instead of providing customized standard cell libraries, we would provide a superset of uh, uh, well-proven uh, cell libraries that do not conform to a specific uh, uh, set of design rules, but actually have uh, multiple special constructs that have all been validated. And if you will, they kind of uh, uh, violate the uh, traditional design, geometric design rules, uh, but actually enable special uh, performance and electrical and functional characteristics that multiple customers uh, uh, seek are seeking. So this will allow the customers to become more of a system on a chip uh, designers rather than going down and designing all the individual components which will be provided uh, by the foundry uh, jointly with the IP ecosystem. In past discussions you've talked about some of the challenges going beyond 28 nanometers, especially at 20 with double patterning and coloring and so on and so forth. Can you elaborate on some of those challenges? The transition between 28 nanometer type of technologies uh, for high performance or for uh, mobile technologies to 20 nanometers and even to 14 nanometers will present a fundamental challenge due to the uh, lithographic and scaling issues uh, that are inherent into, into those geometries. Uh, the, uh, the, the double patterning technology, the uh, coloring of uh, uh, physical layouts is one of the uh, challenges and solutions at the same time uh, that uh, are actually imminent, they're, they're uh, upon us uh, right now. 
the uh, there has been a lot of uh, discussion about uh, uh, providing uh, 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 color blindness or color transparencies versus color awareness. Uh, beyond what uh, is uh, uh, you know what could be uh, a marketing representation of uh, uh, the issue of layout decomposition, the technology that uh, uh, is in front of us will require designs or tools or both designers and tools to be aware of what uh, uh, the ultimate coloring is. So the technology solutions provided at Global Foundries uh, will offer both uh, either automated uh, decomposition, which uh, in a sense uh, enables uh, uh, transparent uh, uh, or color blindness, and also awareness of, of the color. Uh, so you can choose whether you want to be aware of how your layout will be split and where your layout will be split, or you can choose uh, to ignore that, if you, if you will, and have it packaged in a, in a black box. Uh, so this is uh, possible uh, through you know, uh, advanced uh, DFM and uh, CAD automation uh, and will enable you know, all type of designs for uh, the, the 20 nanometer nodes. There is talk that EUV will, may miss the in, uh, insertion point at 14 nanometer. If that's the case, what does this mean for uh, the next node? Are we going to triple patterning or multi-patterning schemes? Are we going to do the litho etch, litho etch, or are we going to do self-aligned double patterning? Or where, where do we see that heading? Although this is a very delicate topic, uh, certainly there is a, a strong possibility that UV might miss the uh, insertion point at 14 nanometers. Uh, without entering into the details of uh, what uh, progress are necessary for high volume manufacturing uh, at 14 nanometers for UV to be available, uh, let's look at what the alternatives uh, might, uh, uh, might be like. Uh, Mark, you have mentioned uh, multiple patterning, triple patterning, even quadruple patterning. These are all certainly possibilities, uh, but uh, they, they, would, uh, they would have an inherent uh, complexity and cost that I don't think uh, uh, they might be uh, feasible for for real uh, for real applications. Uh, therefore, what we might see instead is actually uh, the creation of some sort of uh, hybrid uh, uh, node technology uh, coexisting side by side, where selectively portions of uh, a physical design might be pushed to the limit of geometric scaling, uh, uh, you know, closer to 14 nanometers or even beyond 14 nanometers. Uh, and uh, other portions uh, like analog or uh, backend interconnects uh, might be actually pulled back or they might stay at a previous node or a fraction of the node there. This is actually a much uh, in more realistic uh, you know, evolutionary path rather than introducing additional complexity. Uh, of course, uh, you know, the EDA industry uh, might object to that because uh, uh, the the flows are not really uh, ready to 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 support this type of hybrid uh, uh, of hybrid uh, you know fractional node uh, design. Uh, but this could be also a, an opportunity for the you know EDA industry or you know new startups to actually uh, deliver uh, and deploy uh, new uh, flow. Uh, design flow methodologies. Uh, I think in a, in a past interview you talked about starting at 20 we're going to have this new interconnect layer the middle of the line and what are the implications of that in, in uh, the current or future designs? Middle of the line uh, interconnects uh, are uh, a necessity at uh, uh, 20 nanometers and beyond. Uh, what this means, it means that uh, there is going to be a hierarchical way of interconnecting uh, the logic gates uh, through a series of uh, uh, intermediate levels of interconnect at uh, a local to 
relatively local to a long scale range. Um, the, there are two types of uh, uh, consequences to this, but before I talk about the negative aspect, I would like to say that this is necessary to enable the more complex designs at the lower nodes. And as I uh, said before, as I said before, uh, there will be uh, th there is no other way to go uh, except you know uh, inserting this middle of the line type of interconnects. The challenging aspect of middle of the line consists on uh, of a, a much more complicated and uh, time-consuming. Uh, extraction, uh, parasitic extraction, uh, um, layout versus schematic verification, and and just the uh, the routing capability itself, because uh, a new uh, family of routers will be necessary uh, in order to uh, enable middle of the line. The the other challenge is actually the design methodology itself that today is not uh, uh, capable of uh, supporting this type of uh, methodology. Uh, there were local interconnects a uh, uh, few nodes uh, uh, ago, but uh, uh, they were actually very limited and only a couple of layers. Now we're talking about uh, uh, a certain number of layers that need to be actually tightly uh, coupled and integrated in order to create this middle of the line. Uh, and for this, you need to have novel methodologies, tool to support that, and uh, of course, uh, training and uh, uh, um, available skills in the design community. Uh, the talk around the foundry business and the leading edge chip makers, of course, is the move to FinFETs and uh, tri-gate transistors or whatever you, multi-gate transistors, whatever you call them. I assume there's going to be a multitude of design challenges or challenges. What, what do you see are some of the more uh, important ones or key challenges? FinFET uh, or Trigate transistors uh, have been uh, officially demonstrated in uh, real products uh, in uh, 2011. Uh, now the challenge is for the foundries, uh, the foundries out there, uh, including certainly global foundries uh, and uh, all the other foundries, to actually uh, demonstrate uh, the capability of uh, building FinFET uh, uh, or three-dimensional transistors uh, in uh, real foundry products. Uh, the, the only way for us to get there is to work together with uh, our customers uh, as if we were a, a virtual IDM, an IDM-like type of entity. Uh, the, the only uh, way to deploy the FinFET and interconnect them is actually to uh, optimize both technology and design at the, at the same time. Luigi, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's my pleasure anytime uh, whenever we want to talk about uh, challenges in technology and solutions, uh, please don't hesitate to call me.